Ladies and gentlemen, we are back for yet another series review, and I am talking about Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Not to be confused with Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt's epic action feature. No, here we have Donald Glover and Maya herself, amazing comedians, amazing entertainers that are now spy slash assassins, <laughs> living a life together in a, a humble yet dangerous bliss i have my co-host here keen seven what's up dude what is going on oh my god i (laughs) this man donald glover is too talented it's not fair it's not fair it's basically a glitch in the matrix this this dude is just on another level i cannot believe it like this I mean, my my Erskine's phenomenal. She is. I've just been following Donald Glover's career since Troy Barnes, and it's right. this this man just cooks. Like he just Jesse Pinkman, Walter White cooks. Like just on another level, man. And like him and him and Hero get together, and man, they just cook. I don't even know any other way to say it. <laughs> I don't even know any other way to say it, man. I just, I'm, my jaw's just always on the floor every time this guy comes comes out, man. He's just in his bag, like just goaded, goaded. <laughs> hey, look, I, for for context, you guys, at my wedding, I kid you not, I played a rendition. This is a song that I danced with my wife to, um, from Childish Gambino, which is Donald Glover. If you don't know, I don't know why you wouldn't know, but. He is an amazing artist. And like the fact that he did a rendition of So Into You by Tamia, that was the song that, you know, me and my wife loved. We loved his rendition of it and we danced to it. Um, and it's just hilarious how gifted this man is. I mean, he's a director, he's a producer, like he's a musical artist, he's a comedian, he's all over the place. And now he's an action star. Which is, which is, how do you, how do you, I mean, we knew that he wanted to be Spider-Man and he popped up in that. (laughs) Like there wouldn't, he, he ran so that Miles Morales could exist. Let's, let's keep it a whole stack. But anyway, let's let's keep it on track. I just, we're going to keep it on track. Um, Has it been renewed for a second season yet? They should have been done renewed this for a second through eighth season. So, okay, so yeah, let's 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 backtrack. So just to let you guys know, we did we watched at least two to four episodes of the season, and it is really entertainingly good. Um, I'll say personally, the first episode, I was kind of trying to get a feel of where we were going with it. Um, it was kind of like a slow burn. I was kind of like, uh, they're trying to fill each other out, but I'm I think me, I was trying to fill out what kind of mistress Mr. Smith they were. There are so many big actors in this that you guys, mm-hmm. I'm not going to spoil it here, but your jaw will drop when you see yeah. some of the big actors. It's not that that phenomenal. Actors, not some of the actors you think, but I wouldn't be surprised. And I'll leave it at that. Um, but yeah. as far as like my impressions of it, it is amazingly funny, but yet tonally appropriate. Mm-hmm. And when the action works, it's so well directed and produced that it looks quality. Like, like some of these set pieces, some of these chase sequences, some of these moments like feel like a feature film, which is mm-hmm. which is impressive. I mean, it, it, absolutely, it does not feel like a show at times. It does feel like right. a feature film, which is, I'm not gonna lie. At this point, I'm not shocked because Amazon put so much into their productions they put so much i mean they they're the biggest company on the planet they should they can just throw a billion dollars at whatever they want but like it's it's one of those things like you just at this point like i expect top quality from them and and when it comes to their their exclusives like they just they they really are setting that bar really really high um because yeah, the the cinematography in this it doesn't feel like something in a TV show. It feels like, like you said, it feels like a 
a summer movie. It feels like yeah. a summer action movie. Uh, it it looks amazing. The the wardrobe department cooks like they just it's it's just it's a great show. It's a great show. I remember when I first saw the original Mr. and Mrs. Smith and I thought the concept was so cool and then seeing the trailer for this and in the trailer of course you see like it's them just meeting and so it's really great. It's really great just the the way the chemistry they have between each other is so good and it but it's so funny the way that they nail that like quirky awkwardness of 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 meeting someone right, right for the first time it that like oh man it's just yeah i'm doing my best not to spoil the thing i'll shut up sam but like <laughs> no it's no just... it's, it's a lot because yeah. To be honest, I really didn't know how this was going to work, realistically. And not because they aren't talented, <laughs> but because they're, they seem so different. But if you go back to them as performers, they have very similar tones. Yes. yes. <laughs> and anybody that will say, and Jim Carrey has preached it, if you know good raw comedy, you can immediately hit drama mm -hmm. and all those different ranges of emotion. Well, and yeah. they, they have that in spades to the point that there are moments where they're trying to fill out each other and their emotions, and it doesn't feel forced mm -hmm. because they're just that natural at it. And because they're individually natural at it, their chemistry works. It's, it's phenomenal. It's, it's, it's so yeah. weird. It shouldn't work on paper, but it works. <laughs> but like, honestly, you say it shouldn't work on paper, but as soon as I saw the cast, I'm not going to lie. I had way more faith. I was like, oh, this about to be good. Like I was because uh, uh, like we were talking like we were talking about uh, before uh, Phoebe Waller Bridge was attached to it and it would have still been phenomenal even if she was attached to it. But then like, I think like things with her fell out and then they, they brought in Maya Erskine and it was, it, I absolutely love it. She is phenomenal. She's phenomenal in it. Like uh, Glover's phenomenal. She's phenomenal. And the way that they just bounce off each other, it, mm -hmm. I've always hated like, like, you know how some comedy, it's cringy? Yeah. I've never liked cringy comedy. It's the reason my friends beg me to watch The Office, and I don't. I see Michael Scott for, like, two minutes, and I'm like, this isn't good. I'm going to go get something to eat. Y'all have fun. Like, I just, I cannot do the cringe comedy. This show, it 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 manages to do the awkwardness without the cringe and and right. that and and i love it they they nail it because if you've been in a relationship before you know it, something cringy is gonna happen and you just yeah. like oh i hate this feeling they manage to do this and gloss and 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 you don't get that cringe you just get that really funny awkwardness and it's so it's pretty rare to me when I'm laughing just as much as I'm scared about what's going to happen next. Right. Right. Like they, they, they ride that line. They tote that line so well. I'm like, I'm like in stitches one moment. And then the next moment I'm like, yeah, yeah. Cause I'm not going to lie. Like there's something to, you take a scene and you let it breathe for a second not letting it just run on for no reason, like a bad joke. You let it progress mm -hmm. and just see where it goes. Right. And they've got a plan with that. That's one of the reasons why Atlanta is one of the best shows ever, because they were, that was mm -hmm. their calling card. You, you, yeah. you anticipated, of course, laughing and these amazing characters, but you didn't know, you couldn't anticipate what was going to happen. Yeah. Because they allow stuff to naturally progress like a normal conversation would. First, episode their interactions towards the end i was kind of like 
man, I don't know if I can trust either one of these characters because I don't know if they're being honest with each other. You know, like right. stuff, stuff like that. But they, they 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 use that premise in a natural conversation. Like their conversation was a really it was a mutually exclusive one. Like it was like, okay, I'm asking you a question, you give me answers, but like at the end of the day, you're spies. Yeah. You don't really know this person from a can of beans. Yeah. And what are they prone to get conflictions with? Now, the thing I'll say, and we're both married, there is an interesting progression that happens in this. And it, it, it continues to move as the season goes on of, you know, this like, oh, OK, this interaction like this is mutually exclusive. This works and benefits us. This is practical to, oh, I'm starting to actually feel something. Maybe I might be able to trust you. Oh, wait, I have to go through a door with you. Um, that means I got to cut some stuff off that I'm used to and mm-hmm. you got to give up something. But mm-hmm. yet we're still working together. and. Right. As that's working, that, that's a real marriage. That's what marriage, that's the heart and soul of marriage. Yeah. It's compromise. And yeah. it's, it's, it's in this show. It, it really is. is all in this show. It's great. And the thing is, I felt like the original Mr. and Mrs. Smith worked so well because they nailed, they, they really did a good job of nailing that. I'm with this person and now I realize I don't know anything about this person. Right. They they did such a good job at that and this kind of follows suit with it where you're constantly learning all these new important snippet details about the character's past right. as they as it goes on. Like and it's just it 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 just works extremely well and like you said I'm so glad that they cast comedians in this because what it does is it brings fun to something that could potentially be way too serious um yeah yeah way too serious because i'm not gonna lie like there's moments where like the the sequences and intensity feels like something out of house of cards right and then you might have another moment that feels like something out of like the bear like you have like it just it has these the the and the transitions in it are just flawless to mm-hmm. me. Like it, it's just flawless to me. Like I, um, like you said, it did start out kind of like a slow burn, but at the same time, not only is it a slow burn, it's giving you questions that you want answers to, and it's like, nope, you're gonna wait for it and you're gonna enjoy this meal, but don't, but don't worry, don't worry. Like it's just, it's just good. It's, yeah. it's really good. And like you said, there's so many celebrity cameos that, and they're so talented that when you see them pop up, you're like, you know, they're about to cook. Like, you know, and they do. And it's just, it's really yeah. excellent. It's an excellent show. I, I, yeah. Yeah. I wanted to surprise Keen with this because I'm not sure if he knows some of this. Um, but I'm going to share something about the history of Mr. and Mrs. Smith. There was an original Mr. and Mrs. Smith, 1941, about two people, didn't really know much about each other, and they find that out. It's just a marriage kind of situation, which is really funny. Um, I hadn't seen all of it, but one thing that I did find in my research that there was actually a Mr. and Mr. Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Mr. And Mrs. Smith show in 1996. And I'm going to show you this, Keaton, because you're going to get a kick out of it. And yes, that is Scott Bakula and Mira Bello from A History of Violence. (laughs) And they were John and And Jane Jane Smith and Mrs. Smith. And this series was going on, I think, for around 13 episodes. It did pretty well for itself. And believe it or not, there's another actor that was featured, one of his first roles as well and i'm gonna see if you can pick him out i'm gonna show you some of their little snippets real quick it's hilarious but see if you know who this man is <laughs> yes that is, is that timothy oliphant yes <laughs> and he was featured in this show as well so this isn't the first incarnation of mr and mrs smith and the more interesting thing keaton is after the 2005 movie hit, um, there was a small TV movie of Mr. and Mrs. Smith, and you'll recognize this because it's all about family, right? 
<laughs> I do feel like I remember that. Now, the 1941 Mr. and Mrs. Smith, it 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 sounds familiar. It sounds familiar. Was it I'll look it I'll look it up later. I'll look it up later. I feel like it's in the Hitchcock collection. Mm-hmm. Um I but I've never seen it, but I do feel like I remember seeing something like on the wall and being like, huh, that's interesting. But yeah, I've never seen it. Um that's wow. I did not realize there were so many Mr. Right. and Mrs. <laughs> that's why I told you I was like, Keith, you get a kick out of this for sure. Because I was just like, really though, Scott, Maria, like yeah, and they were looking like they were cooking in that dress. But yeah, this is a, a image from the okay, version. Okay, yeah, yeah. And was it? Is it Alfred Hitchcock? I cannot remember. Okay, but it was when I saw this picture, and I was like, what the? What is this? Oh yeah, <laughs> she like, look. She over there got she getting her Sarah Connor's on over there too. Like he yeah. just like casually got a bazooka <laughs> with one arm, like it's nothing. Chest hair hanging out, right? <laughs> got a drip going. He was ready to kill some ninjas, but um, I, but yeah, I, I'm no, loving that Batman the animated series font they got there too. You see, right, <laughs> right. That you see it. You see it. Right. That is definitely it. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, the other thing I was going to say from a physicality standpoint, both Donald and Maya are in good shape. Like, yeah. when you see them performing some of these action moments, like, they are in shape. And it's it's just weird because I never would have pictured them as these types of characters, but they, they make it work. There's going to be some dope action scenes in this show. That you guys are gonna be floored about just because they're actually performing them, and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I can't wait for you guys to go and check it out. Yeah, me neither, man. It's just, it's great. It's a great show. It's such a yeah. great show, and I'm super excited. Uh, like I said, I really, really would be shocked if this show did not get renewed for another season. I would be very shocked. The only thing that would keep it from getting another season if he got that man got busy with another um series or or Star Wars movie or something like that. Um yeah. I do know that there's a strong chance he's gonna show up in a Marvel movie. There's a very strong chance he's definitely gonna be in a Star Wars movie. I just don't know about series wise, because Atlanta is done. He could put all his efforts into this. Mm-hmm. Um but he also uh, directed and produced Swarm um, with Dominique uh, Fishback, which is mm-hmm. horror slash comedy, edgy, um, interesting hot take on folks that are obsessed with Beyonce. And it's very deadly and insane. Uh, well acted, but um, I don't know. I guess it depends on where his concentrations are. I mean, I think he can make this work, but mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I really, really liked it. I, I, I went into it hesitant. Well, I had to make myself be hesitant because when I saw who was attached to it, I was like fan. I was fanboy, and like <laughs> when I saw who was attached to it, I'm like, they're in it. Okay, I'm already sold. And then like you see some of the special guests popping up. I'm like, they're doing this for me. Like, they... <laughs> right. There are like, you know... special guests in this that are going to throw you guys oh, yeah. off. And I'm yeah. not even completely done with it yet. So I'm not even surprised yeah. if there's more than what I'm seeing. I'm going to tell Keaton after we get off of this one person that he loves that was in one of the episodes that I saw. And I'm not going to... I'll wait. Oh, I'll tell him man. offside. But... Oh. Man, but for me, I I'm surprised that this is this is a really good show, dude. I I probably rested at a nine out of ten. Uh, yeah, it was grade like a minus to a. Like I I would honestly go through this and rewatch it again with somebody else. Mm-hmm. That first episode was a little touch and go. I think the thing that I'll say for you guys, if you're on the fence with the first episode, continue on to the second, and it keeps pushing down on the gas progressionally. As well, it goes. And, and what I'll say about the first episode is I loved it because it said so much 
without actually showing it. It yeah. did such a good job of setting of of setting up the world that you're in without it being like that awkward exposition that's yeah. like forced. It it it's a slow burn because it gives you the setup without that like awkward conversation that gives you both characters entire backstory and what they're fighting for over like a bag of popcorn you know like right. it, it, you know you know how exposition can be forced right yeah this it, it it's so well done it's flawless in giving you what you need to know mm -hmm. without it practically being written on a post-it note you know right and 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 that's what I loved the first episode. I know you said like it could be a, it's a slow burn, but I loved the first episode because you really get to see who these people are. Mm -hmm. And and so yeah, I I yeah, I absolutely love the first episode, especially because it give it still gives you what you want. It still gives you what you want. Um and it it's one of those where it's going to make you watch the next episode. Like what, if you start it, I'd be highly shocked if you don't finish it. Yeah. No. Nah, and, and to be fair, again, like you'll see something like this and then you see something like this. It's like, what the yes. heck happened? Yes. <laughs> yes. What on earth? So, yeah. So <laughs> that is our closing thoughts on Mr. And Ms. Smith recommended watch. I mean, you yes. can go and watch something like Reacher Season 2, of course. You can watch yes. some other amazing shows as well. But go and give Mr. and Mrs. Smith a flying chance. I think you're going to yeah. enjoy it. Definitely. I'm not sure if they're going to release everything all at once. Or yeah, I wasn't release, sure on that. Week basis. Um, yeah. I'd have to go and do a little bit of research on that, you guys. But depending on, um, we'll we'll come back with you guys with that. We'll, we'll let you know when we find out. Yeah. But... I think that they may drop the whole freaking thing, which I'll be fine with because it's a binging yeah. moment. Because it's only eight episodes. It's not mm -hmm. not that hard of a watch. It's just you got to make the it's time not, for it. Yeah, it's not. But I absolutely loved it. Cannot recommend it enough. Like Sam said, I give it the same grade. Uh, nines, I give it an A. If, if it's out of 10, yeah, I definitely give it a nine. I don't really give tens. But uh, uh, yeah, I definitely give it a nine. I definitely give it a nine. Just yeah, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Um, yeah, check it out. Yeah. And one last thing, Keaton, where can everybody find more of your content? So yeah, you know, I'm with uh, Team JVS, but also um, me and my friend Dr. Amelia Brown have a podcast called Bat Therapy. You can find us just about everywhere where you listen to music or podcasts. We also have a website, bat-therapy.com. Uh, we've done some collaborations with Team JVS, of course, uh, and we are currently, uh, our newest season is called Heroes in Training. We've been uh, talking some uh, fun stuff about characters and how and superheroes going through their training and how they became the heroes they are. Uh, but more than more importantly, the whole podcast is all about mental health awareness. Um, we like to focus on mindfulness and just taking care of yourself. And but we have so much fun and it's a nerdy spin. And so, yeah, definitely check us out. Audible, Spotify, YouTube uh podcast addict we are uh am we're on amazon uh we're on apple you can like i said you can find us just about every uh everywhere but yeah the youtube channel is bat therapy and then our website bat-therapy.com you can go there and it'll tell you everywhere that you can listen to us we just started a patreon so yeah yeah check it out please well, you guys heard it here first, and I want you guys to go and check it out ASAP. Anywho, we're going to go until the next time. Not sure what show or craziness we're going to go and break down, but every time I'm able to do it with my good friend, Keaton, I always have a great time. So thanks, we go Keaton, back since we were three years old. Hey. We got to keep it going.
Got to keep it nerdy. <laughs> Always. <laughs> Always. Always. It nerdy. But uh, we're going to go, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace, people. Can't find the outro. Can't find the outro. <laughs> <laughs> Filing out the top of